Alright guys, I was doing some research on the reptilians and uh, I came across something about David Icke. While researching David Icke, I came across this and I think they say it best. Uh, this is Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning and I'm going to switch over to them here and listen to this. Oh, what's he doing? Just play. Are you a sheep or a lizard? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Thank you for making us a part of your daily That's routine. That's right. Link, what is your opinion on that? That's this? Link. I respect lizards, but I do not touch them. Really? Yeah, they're tough to catch. You can take, catch them by the tail sometime, and then they get away, and you keep the tail. My kids try to catch them, and I act like I'm not afraid what, while they're doing it. What if I told you that they were in a secret space station inside the moon, controlling everything you think? <laughs> I would say... <laughs> I would say I wouldn't believe you unless you started shaking your head and, like, laughing maniacally under your breath. <laughs> and then I'd be like, okay, I'm in on whatever this is. Well, that's an oversimplification of something that a man named David Icke does believe. And I have been introduced into the world of David Icke. I I've spent a lot of time just... You and Dave? I feel like I went to the moon space station. I feel like I've gone and I've come back and I'm here to report to you and the mythical beast on what I have learned. Okay, so this is like a public service announcement. Not really. Um, okay, this is like a crash course in uh, lizards? Yeah, crash course in lizards. Tell me about lizards it. Lizards 101. Okay, David Icke, uh, he believes that the world is controlled by a race of 12-foot-tall, blood-sucking, shape-shifting, alien, reptilian, and human hybrids. Uh, that's, what? That's a bold claim, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of background, okay? But it, well, bold is one adjective I've used. <laughs> Another one is... You Crazy. Don't believe it. Well, well okay. and, and awesome. It remains to Sounds be seen. awesome. Okay, uh, he's a guy that played soccer back in the 70s. Oh. Or football, as uh, they call it, where he played it, which is in England. And uh, he was, he only played for a little bit, but then he became a sportscaster and actually became like a public figure in England. He was well known as a sportscaster. Oh, really? Okay. Think Bob Costas without the pink eye at the Olympics. In 1990. He was in a bookstore, as sportscasters love to frequent bookstores, and he heard a voice telling him to go to a certain section. And this wasn't like from the intercom, like, science, it wasn't uh, like a library. Like, it was a library, like, whispering to him. Like, no. You should check out. What did he check? It was a, well, it was the psychic section. <laughs> you should check out the psychic section. So it was a voice. He actually felt a magnetic force pulling him towards the section, uh, which would be a great thing to install at Barnes & Noble if you're listening. Uh, but... Uh, it was it, it, it happened to him, and he goes to the psychic section. There's a book by a particular psychic. He decides not just to read her book, but to visit her. Anyway, during his visit with her, she basically tells him that he is special and that the spirit world is going to bring messages to Earth through him. He took this incredibly seriously. And so are you. How seriously? Well, in 1991, very shortly after the psychic woman interaction... He held a press conference. Again, this is a public figure. Think Bob Costas. This is like Bob Costas doing an, uh, a press conference. Okay. Saying that the world is coming to an end, and also, I am the son of the Godhead. He was wearing a turquoise tracksuit while he did this, which is a <laughs> really detail. Because he was also entering the turquoise period, where... Like that's, one, what, that's what he calls it, man. Like once a month. Or and this isn't just like something like your wife goes through on, in May. You yeah. know, this is this was this was <laughs> he was in a period where he felt like he had. And my I wife is not wearing tracksuit. I, I got it. First of all, this was not intentional. I swear to you that wearing this shirt was not intentional. It was not intentional, which means that ah, the freaking thing is true. It's but getting this, to you, man. Anyway, he goes through this period where he's wearing uh, this turquoise. That's not a tracksuit. Though. Tracksuit or turquoise in general because it brought him closer to God and also it helps to channel positive energy. Sure. Uh, of course, he's saying these things. This gets a little bit of attention, so he gets invited onto a talk show, the Terry Wogan Show, a major British talk show, where this happens. Was it a great shock for you to discover this at 38? But I think the I think the word I think the word is gobsmacked. But again, again, you know the best way of removing negativity is to laugh and be joyous. So I'm delighted that there's so much laughter in the audience tonight. But no, but, a, but just let just let me just let me say this: they're laughing at you, they're not laughing with you. 
poor guy. He, I mean, he was like trying to spin the laughter, and they're like laughing at him. And I guess I was laughing at him right before this. Now I feel well, bad about it. He doesn't have like a hockey cut, and he is in the tracksuit. The tracksuit looks good, though. I, like I feel it. really bad when the guy ends up being yeah, right. I'm, I'm totally on board with the tracksuit. But what is this? You go on a okay. show, and then you just get laughed off. So what basically... You know this to it. Uh, everything kind of unraveled for him after that point. He was a laughing stock oh. in England and beyond. And he couldn't go into a pub without being made foot of. He was being chased by the paparazzi. He was like, it's Bob Costas. I'm putting it in terms for you. Bob Costas is crazy. Oh, he wears a tracksuit. Mm -hmm. So this got to him, it got into a point where he was willing to just let go of, he had no reservations and he just started saying exactly what he thought, which is, he believes the world is controlled by a small group of people called the Babylonian Brotherhood. Kind of like the Illuminati. You know, they've infiltrated the government and they're running the world. They're the people who are really in control. Not the puppets, like the presidents and the prime ministers, but the, actually the Babylonian but Brotherhood. But they're shape-shifting lizards? They're shape-shifting human lizard hybrids, Link. Because back in Babylonian times, thousands of years, years ago, these lizard aliens came to Earth and they mated. That's the international symbol for mating. At least no, it's a mythical warning. It's, it's not. <laughs> and they mated and they made uh, human-lizard hybrid people that have started this race. There's multiple races, but let's keep it simple. They started a race of hybrids that have, through the generations, ruled the world. You can't tell it because they're shape-shifting. You can't just look at them. They don't have weird eyes or anything. They don't smell like... They've been in a pet store. They are just this, these hybrid shapeshifters. But here's a few people that he believes are these lizard people. Queen Elizabeth II. The Bush family. That's George, the first George and the second George. Bob Hope. Al Gore. Chris Christopherson. Chris Christopherson. Country singer and actor. And Boxcar Willie. Which this is the He's most... He's a country music singer. He is. Right? And this is the most convincing to me because he has a song called 16 Chickens and a Tambourine. I'm sure it's a great... And he also it believes chickens in the that the moon... All I need in life. Is a, the All moon right. is like the Death Star. It's an empty space. It's a planetoid. It's empty, and it's the lizards are in there. They have control over it, and it's like a satellite that is broadcasting what he calls a moon matrix, which causes you and me and everyone on Earth to not be able to see reality for what it is. It's being broadcast. Now, the moon matrix, I do believe in. Oh, good. Like... I've been with that for years. Tracksuit, moon matrix. Right. Now here, now I've said, partially all, I've said all these outlandish things. Here's the interesting thing, like, I don't know if this guy's crazy. He may not be. Okay, before Rhett tries to convince me uh, of that dubious statement, it's time for Breaking News. Okay, this is a segment where we have written all news. Right. Uh, these guys decide, I don't know, I'm a little confused. Uh, some trippy stuff, but I want to do some more research <laughs> my way, of course, and I'll get more of this back to you. Catch you on the flip. Love you. Peace.